hearing God's holy word. Dear Lord, enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your spirit, that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the scriptures. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. But here on this mountain, God of the angel armies will throw a feast for all the people of the world, a feast of the finest foods, a feast with vintage wines, a feast of seven courses, a feast lavished with gourmet desserts. And here on this mountain, God will banish the pall of doom hanging over all peoples, the shadow of doom darkening all nations. Yes, he'll banish death forever. And God will wipe the tears from every face. He'll remove every sign of disgrace from his people wherever they are. Yes, God says so. Also at that time, people will say, look at what's happened. This is our God. We waited for him and he showed up and he saved us. <coughs> this God, the one we waited for, let's celebrate, sing the joys of his salvation. God's hand rests on this mountain. This is the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Jerusalem, new created, descending, resplendent out of heaven, 
as ready for God as a bride for her husband. I heard a voice thunder from the throne, look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood, making his home with men and women. They're his people. He's their God. He'll wipe every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone. All the first order of things gone. The enthroned continued. Look, I'm making everything new. Write it down. Each word dependable and accurate. And then he said, it's happened. I'm A to Z. I'm the beginning. I'm the conclusion. From water of life, well, I give freely to the thirsty. Conquerors inherit all this. I will be God to them, and they'll be sons and daughters to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am your news bulletin to let you know that Thanksgiving is less than four weeks away. The reason I know this is because I got an email on Thursday from my parents telling me that Thanksgiving is four weeks away and we need to start thinking about what we will be bringing to Thanksgiving summer. Oh, don't want any more stress in my life. Um, and it got me thinking about this idea of a Thanksgiving meal. When I was, before I was born, my parents uh, decided not to do two Thanksgivings. They did it once or twice, and I think they thought they were going to explode, and so they decided that they would make their home the gathering place. And so they said, if you want to come here, you can come here, but we are not going to two Thanksgivings. And so my grandparents, their parents and in-laws, were forced to become friends. Because every holiday, they both got an invite and the notice that Mark and Judy were not going to be going anywhere else. We were born, and I remember Katie and I, my sister and I, just longing for another kid at the table. Instead, we inherited an extra set of grandparents. Because somebody else moved into the neighborhood and they didn't have a place to go, and so the tradition began that Claire and Walt came to every holiday meal. I remember longing for young and that didn't happen until one of those older faces passed away. And slowly we started adding people to the table I have joked that my parents are the island of misfit toys, if you get that reference from the 80s. Um, they like to collect people. So it could be my mom's sister-in-law and her sister-in-law's brother and his wife, because they don't have, and my dad nephew on that side, and now the Creek Bomb in-laws, and the table just gets bigger and bigger. And it's beautiful. It's a hodgepodge of people being in the same room. But it is also a place where there are some empty chairs in my brain. They're both and. It's a bittersweet thing, if that makes sense. There are people that should be there. And there are new people that have been welcomed and that wasn't to go to church, kill a lamb, and have a feast, find a religious celebration. And we find that Jesus did that with the Last Supper. Let's gather around a table. He didn't say to, to do a certain ritual. He didn't say to say certain words. He said, eat this bread and drink this cup around a table together in memory and remembrance. 
remembrance of me. Later disciples <coughs> gather around the table as they go out in rows. So it's not by accident that we as Christians tend to gather around tables. We have meals at weddings and we have meals at funerals. And both of those, I think, are good and right. Because what we see is at the end of days, we will, will be the charcuterie board of my dreams. Plus, I believe in the message. I heard Lynn say gourmet dessert, so I'm assuming there's some tiramisu or some creme brulee at the table, too. The people of God have the promise that death will be as God's people. And so, if you're like me, your um, Thanksgiving table, your um, All Saints Day remembrance, you would rather have the person here than lighting a candle for them. But the bittersweet, beautiful, messy thing of life is that at the end, it'll all be brought together. If I'm honest, the practical side of me really wanted to ask Session if we could have communion next week or last week and just focus on All Saints. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought about this text from Isaiah where we are told that there will be a heavenly banquet for all. When we celebrate communion, there is an acknowledgement that we are celebrating, and this is a foretaste, a beginning, just a, an appetizer for that kingdom banquet, and it will be with the people who we miss right now. And so, I admit that this is going to be messy. But my hope is that it will be joyous as well as a blessing. And so before I stop talking, I'm going to talk about some logistics because I want to actually enact the streaming forth to the mountain of God, to the feast, when we get to remember that there will come a time, it's not today, but there will come a time when there is no more pain and there is no more tears and death no longer gets the final word.
Thank mm-hmm. you.